Welcome back, everybody. In the lead up to Monday's final public meeting of the January 6th committee, members say they are seriously considering recommending criminal charges against the former president himself. This dramatic finale, it is all the result of their over a year long probe where witnesses dropped bombshells about efforts by Trump and his campaign to stay in power. One of those witnesses, Arizona's Republican Speaker of the House, Rusty Bowers. He said, We've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. Did you tell the president in that second call that you supported him, that you voted for him, but that you were not going to do anything illegal for him? I did, sir. And Speaker Rusty Bowers is joining us now. Speaker, thanks for joining us on this. We appreciate it. Um, I, I want to start, you. if we can, um, with this final um, public hearing that we're going to be seeing tomorrow and then the release of the report um, on Wednesday. So NBC now um, essentially reporting there are going to be three possible recommendations of charges. We're looking at um, insurrection, obstruction of an official proceeding of Congress, and conspiracy as well. From your own experience and the information that is publicly um, available uh, do you think the former president and some of his top allies should, in fact, be charged? I, I, I don't want to pretend that I'm any type of a prosecutor, and I'm certainly not one of those who held these. These, um, I would say that they were very in, intense and comprehensive hearings, all in all, but they weren't a trial, um, much more like a, a grand jury. But when, what I saw and what I heard myself and then what happened to me, uh, those things certainly shouldn't be tolerated in the, in our country. And uh, if I said anything else, that would be that would be dishonorable of me. So you don't want to go on the record saying whether or not you think the former president should, in fact, be charged. But you're comfortable in saying that it shouldn't be tolerated, that a, a, for, a former president shouldn't incite an insurrection. Go ahead. I was I'm comfortable if he was charged. I'm I'm comfortable. I, I think there's plenty of evidence of all kinds of things here. And. If they felt that he did that and they charged him, I, I'm not uncomfortable with that. I'm just not the one who would take that job. That's not my job. Got but it. I do have a job, and, and, and I do it. Are you comfortable if he's not charged? Um, I, I think there should, there should be some action taken against anybody who in, indulges in this, this type of activity in our country. This is, this is harmful to our country. And, and there are many people who are, who are following like Pied Piper. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's dangerous. And I, and I feel it was had goals in mind that were not uh, those of the good of our country. I just don't. Um, I want to talk about specifically this fake elector scheme, um, if we can, Speaker. Um, there are folks in your state, local officials, that received these grand jury subpoenas uh, with regard to this fake elector scheme, um, which sought really the appointment of right these fake electors um, to cast these electoral college votes for um, the former president. This is something that you actually told the committee, uh, Rudy Giuliani, pitched to you as well. What is your reaction to the investigation heading in this um, direction? Have you spoken with the DOJ about this? I have not had any uh, communication personally to me, and I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, I've also communicated with my previous lawyer, who's now, all of us are transitioning away from the House of Representatives. But he, he has not heard anything, and I have not heard anything from them. If I, I'm happy to cooperate in any way I can to, to promote legality in what we do, and a trust by the public in the country in our elections. It's the underpinning of the republic to have a democratic and fair election and i think those people volunteering on their own they certainly weren't elected to to serve as our electors and to go back there is a fraud and i think they should be held accountable I'm, i have no problem with that let's talk about the former president announcing that he's going to run um for re-election come 2024 um at one point following um your testimony you actually said that you would support him if he were the nominee but then you later clarified um, went on to say uh, that you were not um inclined to support him you said specifically i don't want the choice of having to look at trump again and if it comes i'll be hard pressed i don't know um, what i'll do but i'm not inclined to support him because he doesn't represent uh, my party, where are you now on that? I, I'm not going to be voting for uh, 
candidate uh, Trump. And I, and I, you know, it's it's hard to think that my my party could choose him. But what I said then about that we need a robust primary, I think that's happening. And there are people who are the country, uh, not just in Arizona, where we stated, I think, emphatically today and yesterday, the last court rounds or court cases were found against the steel uh, candidates. And uh, I think the country in Arizona, we stated it, we're not going to put up with this anymore. And I think the country won't put up with it anymore. It'll be hard to split the party. Um, my, my personal party here in Arizona showed me the door. That's, that's, that's totally fine with me. But for the principles that are embodied in the party platform, it would be difficult because Mr. Trump will not win this election if he was, if he was nominated, and I'm not going to help him. Rusty Bowers, thank you.